Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Uh, today's topic, uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, this bird and yeah, people don't uh, understand them, they, they're maligned and uh, they, it, it, well, okay, let's get into why, why they're maligned. The brown-headed cowbird, that is a male there, you can see the nice pretty brown feathers on the head, the rest of the body is black. They are here in the breeding season. We don't see a lot of them in winter. Occasionally they're here in winter, but most of, most of them go south. Uh, why are they maligned? Well, they are famous for their breeding system, which is called brood parasitism, uh, meaning they lay their eggs in other birds' nests and let other adult birds raise their young for them. Now right off the bat that sounds like a bad thing and, and for a lot of bird species it is a bad thing because um, they their young are often larger and hatch quicker than the other birds that they lay their eggs in their nest say a yellow warbler which is a, you know, often a victim for them and so that brown herded cowbird baby hatches first and quite often either outcompetes the yellow yellow warbler's babies uh, for the food and the yellow warbler babies starve and it and the cowbird survives and grows and and you don't get any yellow warblers out of the nest which is a bad thing of course for the yellow warbler um, so why is this a bad thing well and how did they come about this system Brown-headed cowbirds evolved in the grasslands of uh, northern uh, North America with the bison. And there's four species of uh, cowbirds, four or five, um, you know, worldwide. They're all here in the New World on this, this side of the planet. And uh, three of them in North America, but the other two are in the far southern uh, parts of the country. The tip of Florida and very southern, southern Florida and then the arid uh, southwestern states for the brown bronze cowbird. Now the brown-headed cowbird evolved on, the, on our Great Plains and when you follow around you're dependent on catching insects that are being kicked up by the American bison uh, over the years and, and eating those. Those bison are very nomadic and those bison move a lot and, you're mo and you don't have time to build a nest uh, lay your eggs, sit on your eggs, and, and feed your babies. By the time you go through a whole nesting process, the bison are long gone, which is who you depend on to generate your food source for you. And this is what happened with the brown-headed cowbird. This is it, the, the evolution history of that bird. So, is that a problem for all birds? It really isn't, because the birds that evolved with the brown-headed cowbird on the Great Plains uh, are good at recognizing this cowbird egg being different in their nest. Scissor tail flycatchers are famous for when they see a, uh, a cowbird egg in their nest, they build a completely new nest on top of the old nest and lay a whole new batch of eggs. They don't even worry about the old eggs, they just may lay a new batch of eggs and do that. Other birds have different ways of dealing with them, sometimes flipping their eggs out. But these are birds that evolved with the cowbirds in, in the Great Plains. Where the cowbird becomes a problem is for woodland birds, because cowbirds are typically not woodland species. So things like wood thrushes that nest in the woods, uh, whenever a cowbird lays their egg in their nest, well, the wood thrush has no idea that it's a different egg, and they usually raise the cowbird babies and they don't lay any wood thrush eggs, which is terrible. And that's been a real problem. And it has caused some birds, it has pushed certain species of birds uh, toward the edge of extinction because of that. Um, but what created that problem? Well, it was us. When we, cr when we cleared more land and, and our expansion, because remember, from here to the e East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, they say a squirrel used to could travel from New York City to St. Louis and his feet never touched the ground. It was all forest, eastern deciduous forest. Well, when we went in and cleared and cut all these trees and brought in cattle and opened up the land, that made it a gateway open for the cowbirds to expand. And the uh, cowbirds now have expanded all over the country. And these birds that were woodland birds don't recognize them. They didn't evolve with the cowbirds. So in that case, and for some species, especially woodland species, Brood parasitism is a very bad thing for them, and you well, know, you know, it's a problem we created. So, but they are protected. That's the other part of the story. Is well, 
You know, we know starlings and house sparrows and, and feral pigeons are not protected by law. Well, brown-headed cowbirds are a native species, and they are protected. So you can't hurt those birds. You can't shoot them. You can't, and legally, you can't take their egg out of a nest. If you see a cardinal nest with that one different egg in it, it's illegal for you to take that egg out of that nest and destroy it. It's, it that, I know some people that do that, which I can't encourage it. But they, the, the cowbirds are, you know, they're part of our world, and whether you like their system or don't is a natural thing. It's something that has happened over time, and it's I say a pretty unique system. My question has always been, how does a baby cowbird know it's a cowbird and not a yellow warbler? I think it's fascinating that the cowbird can grow up and inherit that system when it didn't have the adults to teach it what to do. So it's amazing. They're they're a unique species, but they're not the most loved species by uh, bird watchers as a whole. So that's the brown-headed cowbird. Thanks for the suggestion. If you have you like the programs, give them a like. Share them, please. Uh, send in ideas for future programs. And until then, come by and let's talk birds.